All right, let's talk about Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Didn't go so well, right? Wasn't their best day, unfortunately, as, you know, uh, obviously the 49ers really blew out the Jaguars in this game. So, you know, I already made a video on why the 49ers offense was as dominant as it was, but I kind of want to talk about the other side. Jacksonville only three points in this game against a good defense, but still, uh, Lawrence's stat line was rough. I've heard a lot of people talk about how maybe he, you know, it was is overrated. I've heard that get thrown around. Well, is he overrated? Does the offense around him just stink, or was it good defense? Well, hopefully, I will answer those questions in this video. Let's just get into it. Uh, this play, it's a third down and four, and you have a receiver who's trying to get into a gap in coverage underneath. Okay, simple enough. You know, this is a really difficult play uh, to pull off, but you know, let's see if they can do it. Watch as Lawrence is going to take the snap. There's, you know, a bit of a window. But again, part of why I said it's a really difficult play to pull off is, I guess, two things. One, the situation. Third and four, the, the Niners know to cover that first down marker. They're not just going out. It's not like a, a video game with bad AI uh, intelligence, right? I guess I just said artificial intelligence intelligence. But you know what I'm trying to say. Uh Fred Warner is the guy, that's the second part, he's the guy who's right there, he can try to run over and make a play, so this is difficult, this is a really high degree of difficulty play, but Lawrence is going to make a great throw, and they pick up a first down, to me, we did see some great throws from Lawrence in this game, I actually think that was kind of the issue, was we only really saw great throws from Lawrence when things were working, because it took great plays uh, from him to get things to work. That's more or less how the Jacksonville Jaguars had to run their offense. But they needed greatness from Lawrence. And I don't care if it's Patrick Mahomes. I don't care if it's Tom Brady. Uh, you know, I don't care who it is. If you have to be great play after play after play, you're not going to be able to move the ball very far. You're just not. Like this play, for example, uh, what's going to happen here is it's relatively similar. It's, again, going to be zone coverage. The Niners love their zone coverage. Not all day run, but they like to run it. Uh, and you have a receiver who's running a route. It's your tight end. You know, over the middle. Could get open. However, right when this play begins, you see that Lawrence is going to take the snap. He looks over there, and they're, again appears to be a window about to get open, but it's taking a little bit longer. There's been contact, so it's, it's just taking a minute. And so for Lawrence, well, what do you do? Watch him step up to bide time, throws it, but at that point, the window was closed and also maybe wasn't the best throw either from Lawrence. So all those factors, it was not able to be complete. That just goes to show, though, the high degree of difficulty that they had to deal with, right? They were dealing with uh, real high degree of difficulty stuff in this game. Lawrence was dealing with really high degree of difficulty stuff in this game, and, you know, they weren't able to pull it off consistently. Like, going over to something like this, this is, you know, uh, I think another interesting example of kind of what went wrong for Jacksonville, where it's going to be a, you know, man coverage. So, hey, this is not zone. This is man. One-on-one -on -one matchups across the board. There's, you know, safety deep and a player covering the middle of the field as well. But on the outside, you can have a one-on-one -on -one matchup for a touchdown. And that's what Jacksonville's trying to do. They're trying to score seven points, I guess technically six points on this play. You're already down 10, so I don't hate the play call necessarily. It's a good play call, right? I mean, the reality is your odds of winning three yards down the field are kind of the same as winning 19 yards and a touchdown down the field. So might as well go for it all. Lawrence is going to take the snap. He's going to look towards Christian Kirk. He's going to fire towards Christian Kirk, but it's great defense, can't make the play. Uh, and this is something that Jacksonville, you know, they brought in Calvin Ridley to be this guy, and, and I don't think Ridley's been a disaster or anything like that, but he hasn't really been like a true number one receiver either. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, 471 yards through nine games, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's, you know, just shy of an 1,000-yard receiver. I think you, you were kind of hoping for him to be like a 1,300-yard receiver uh, like he has been at his best. Uh, and, you know, Christian Kirk, who I really like, isn't really the outside threat. So teams don't really have to worry about these types of plays so much. And that's something that is maybe a bit more long-term concerning and a bit less like, well, it's the Niners defense. The Niners actually haven't been great at these types of defending these types of routes this season, but they were in this game. So that's a little concerning. Also, we got to talk about this, which, you know, got to talk about some pass rush, but of course, to talk about the pass rush. You have to talk about the whole play. Uh, you know, concept uh you have a receiver running a deeper route another receiver running a route over the middle hopefully that over the middle route that's the one you want to get open you run a play action get linebackers to move in you know the deep route gets the safety to move uh further back that's the way this play is designed to work 
watch as you're going to see Lawrence, you know, does run this play action. He, you know, steps up in the pocket a little bit, still looking down the field, doesn't love what he sees, and now he's in trouble because there's pressure. There's There was pressure a lot in this game. The offensive line has some issues. And also, let's be honest, when you're playing the 49ers, a lot of offensive lines have issues. So you're in real trouble here. As you see, Lawrence is going to take a sack, which, I mean, maybe you would like to see him get to a next read, get to a check down a little bit quicker. But again, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's not his fault here. He's in a tough situation. He's trying to make magic happen. You can't expect him to do it on every single play. You just can't. It's not going to happen. And this is how it works. Again, people have, in their minds, they have it backwards. They think, well, if an offensive line can give time for the quarterback, then the quarterback will have time to make a throw. A lot of times it's the other way around. It's that first read. If that first read is open, 99% of the time, you're going to have time to hit the first read. The offensive line gives you time to move on to the next read. So when you don't have a great offensive line and you're going up against a great defensive line, you need to get first reads open. You're not going to win if you don't get those first reads open and they weren't getting those first reads open. And that was probably, in my opinion, the biggest issue. Uh, and, you know, again, the pass rush was amazing. Like this play is a good example, which like, you know, I don't even think the tackles have been terrible this season. But when you got Nick Bosa going up against you, you're going to have some troubles. You are. Watch as you're going to see Bosa get that right arm underneath uh, the, the right arm of the tackle. Gets through very quickly. So for Lawrence, I mean, what do you do at this point? You have to try and figure out something. It's a third and one. And it's still a game at this point, right? You're just outside of field goal range. You know, be a long field goal from here. Down 17 points. But you want a touchdown. Down 17, you know, uh, 20 to 3. You want to find a way to get the ball into the end zone. You want to go for it. Uh, you want to convert right here. Uh, so for Lawrence, who knows he's in trouble, he's going to try to you know, make a little magic happen, just try to hit his halfback, maybe, you know, let us let one of your talented players hopefully make a move. As you see, Lawrence is going to walk in the sack, kind of throw it a bit high, gets batted up, and then intercepted. I mean, that's just, that's brutal. That's a devastating type play. It really is uh, if you're, you know, Lawrence, who, you, you know, these are types of plays you don't want to have happen, but it's kind of a great example of just things going wrong, right? The offensive line was an issue. Lawrence is in a tough spot, wasn't able to make the tough play. And then the worst possible outcome happened where it got batted up and intercepted. Uh, and that kind of sums up the game right there. So how do I feel about Jacksonville? Yeah, I still think they're a good team. I, I do. To me, they're still clearly a playoff team at this point, which is, you know, cool, right? I mean, you know, uh, playoffs are always fun. I still think they're probably going to win the AFC South, but you can't say it for certain. But I still think Lawrence is very good. I think Lawrence hasn't been in a great position to succeed. I know the, you know some of the box score stats aren't spectacular, but you can't focus on box score stats. There's advanced stats I like to use, and most importantly, I like to use tape. When it comes to quarterbacks, I still think that's the best way to evaluate uh, quarterbacks, not to sound like some of those you know uh, old uh, school style uh, you know football talking heads, but for quarterbacks, I think it's kind of true. I do think though that, you know, for Jacksonville, who kind of saw themselves as dark horse Super Bowl contenders heading into this season, um, you know, their offense has a lot of figuring it out, figuring out to do if they're going to be, you know, actually able to live up on th that kind of hype. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.